What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're here with Austin. I'm back again. As always. Two days in a row. We're going to be filming a top five intermediate tricks to learn on BMX edition two. First up, we're gonna have Austin show you the tail whip. Yeah, I'm really good at this one. I'm not a, I'm not a tail whipper. He can't tail whip. Although this isn't a t necessarily like a tutorial video, we're gonna try to give a really brief how-to for each one of these tricks. So to do the tail whoop, I recommend going out of a bank because you get a little more air than hop, but it's it's also not as deadly as some other obstacles that are out there. If your right foot forward, you're gonna use your left foot to kick. If your left foot forward, you're gonna use your right foot to kick. So I ride right foot forward. So I'm gonna go up off the bank, do a really big hop, and then kick the tail whoop. If you kick the tail whoop too early, it's bad news because you're, you're probably gonna dead sail it. When you kick, do you slide your foot off of the pedal into the like the rear triangle, or how does that work? I do not. I know some people do. Okay. So I just keep my foot right on, do a big hop, and then just push the bike over like so. It's about half kick, and then the, the other half is in the arms. So you're going to do a circular motion, and that's going to help you spin the bike around. You might want to practice this on flat ground. First, just make sure you can flip it around only using your arms. Once you can do that, you're in pretty good shape because the kick's gonna help you. You don't have to use only arms. The hardest part of the trick is hopping back on. You just gotta, you just gotta go for it, really. I know some people pick their pick their knees up. That way they can get over the bike and back on the pedals. I kind of leave my right leg out and aim for the pedal coming around, and then I pick my left leg up and then bring it over the bike, and then just clamp onto anything you can and hopefully you don't slip your feet and rack your shins. I would definitely recommend the shin guards for this one. Next up, trick number two is gonna be the 180 bar spin. Obviously, you should know how to bar spin before you go trying this one. Basically, the key to this one is throwing it the opposite direction of your spin because it's gonna make the bar not a full 360 rotation. It's gonna feel pretty similar to just a normal bar spin. Like you're gonna do all the same steps, hop, level out, get the bars out like uh, away from your knees, pinch your seat or your cranks, whatever you guys do. As far as like when to throw the bars in the spin, I like to get to about 90 degrees and then do the bar spin. So then, so start right here, hop, get to about 90, and that's when the bars can happen. Try like that. If you throw them too early or too late, it might throw off like the axis of your spin. You could land kind of weird. So if you commit to this trick, it's really pretty easy. It's really similar to a regular bar spin. It's actually easier, honestly, because you're doing not even a full rotation. Personally, I learned this trick just out of a bank, but most people are probably gonna want to do them fly out. That's where a lot of people learn tricks, but you can learn this trick hop. It definitely didn't take me long to get them on flat after I learned them out of banks, but it is going to require a lot more energy. So you're not really going to be able to try as many times as if you have, you know, a ramp to kick you. Oh, I was demonstrating what not to do properly. So now that's <laughs> what's going to happen if you don't watch the video all the way. <laughs> yeah. but. Next up, we're gonna be doing the tuck no hander. Before even trying this trick, make sure you're comfortable taking one hand off, maybe doing a tire grab, because that kind of sets you up pretty well for it. Because when you do the tire grab, your bars are gonna come up into your waist and you're gonna wanna be in that same position when you take both of them off. And I think the key to doing this trick is setting your bars in your waist the best you can. And if you can pinch like your, your head tube, that's going to be your best bet because it's going to help keep the bike stable. And then from there, you just got to, you got to take them off. I usually go straight out to the side because then you just bend your arms and your, your bars are right there. You're definitely going to want a ramp with more air time. We're going to do it out of this, this big bank right here. And even that is kind of pushing it for the hang time that you need to do this trick. Fly out would be a great way to learn it. Doing it off really steep ramps really helps because then your bike's already pretty much in position. All right, so next up on the list is gonna be the Switch 180. Make sure you know how to 180 really well before doing this one. 
to do this trick, it's really gonna be the exact same thing as a regular 180. It's just gonna feel really weird at first. You're just gonna carve the opposite way. The only thing I would say that might be a little different is you might wanna carve and hop a little bit harder than you would on a normal 180. But really, it's all there is to it. It's just a, it's just the 180. It's just gonna feel really weird at first. And also the switch half cab, hardest trick in BMX, so. <laughs> I would say so. It's really tough, but it's the same thing as a normal half cab. Just, just and way harder. That's weird. I think that you only take half of a crank before you do I the half cab. Definitely do. But I always have to do a full crank, so yeah, that's yeah. interesting. I don't know. I just, for me, it's easier to just hop as soon as I can. All right, guys, for a quick bonus trick, we're going to throw in the Switch 360. Because once you get switch 180s down really all you do is go a little bit faster carve a little bit harder and you should be able to be able to get a full 360 around go watch our how to 360 video before doing this one too because it's going to be the exact same thing just the opposite direction all right guys next up it's actually going to be like a few different tricks in one we're just going to talk about all the different variations you can do with the manual like toboggan manuals, dragon slayers, manual 180. What else is good? Like hop man hopping into stuff, landing in manuals, stuff like that. Tire grab manual? Tire grab manual. <laughs> I can't do that. So the dragon slayer, it's going to be a manual, but instead of both hands, like on each side of the bars where they're supposed to go, you're going to take whichever hand you're more comfortable with and you're going to move it to the same side. So my left hand stays on the bar and then I break my right hand in behind it like this. Might be kind of weird for some of you guys if you hold like outside. I hold pretty far in so there's plenty of room for me to get the other hand on there. I actually put my, the hand that comes off over top. Oh, so you go in like this. So really, I guess it just depends. Whatever works for you, I guess. Don't overthink it because the balance point on this, it's gonna feel really similar to a normal manual, except you're just gonna be slightly further back on the bike. As far as getting out of it goes, um, really just make sure you get the wheel straight. Like you could miss a hand and you're gonna you're gonna be fine. Your hand's gonna miss sometimes, it happens, but definitely just try and get the wheel back straight. Uh, having other tricks where you take your hands off definitely helps. So just to add a few tips onto what Austin was saying, first off, getting into it, the hand that you're taking off, I would just say try to get it on the grips as soon as you can. That way you can really sit into it and get balanced. If you're really slow, it's gonna be really hard to get to that balance point without getting all funky. Yeah. Another th good thing is to make leaning back and getting into position with your hands like a simultaneous movement. You don't wanna be trying to get your hands sorted and then lean back, cause you're not gonna have that much time really. So try and do it all at once, so. Just be ready to bail though. If you drop your tire, you'll just kind of turn and you can jump off. Right. And then for getting out of the Dragon Slayer, the only thing I would add is when I'm approaching the end of it, I try to get the front end a little bit higher because when you start putting your hand back, you're gonna start dropping a little bit. Once you get the Dragon Slayer down, you can actually do a couple little adjustments to change the trick up a little bit. One of them being, instead of grabbing the bars, you just grab your seat and the balance point's really similar. You'll just have to try it and get that one down. And you can also just completely take your hand off. <laughs> and again, the balance point's pretty similar. And I would recommend doing all the same tips that we had for the Dragon Slayer. Very strange. Yeah, it's a weird one. You just have to try it. Very nice. Very nice. There it is. All right, next up is gonna be a manual 180. So this one, obviously, if you know how to manual, you should have a really solid 180. Also fakies, that'll help a lot being good at those. So the key to this trick is carving while you're in the manual. So how you carve, it's you're gonna kind of tweak your bars to turn a little bit but most of it's going to be shifting your weight. So you get a slight curve and then you pop up and spin like that. So essentially it's not even going to be a full 180. The manual is, you can do 
so many different combinations both into and out of it so just be creative with that one but we are going to add two more that we think are pretty essential and that's going to be the hop to manual and also hopping down something and manually this is really going to help you connect your lines and yeah just lead to a bunch of cool combos to do this one first the hop to manual i just try to hop a little bit higher than you would think you need to and then i really just focus on slamming my back wheel onto the object i'd go about it kind of a different way i hop up and i kind of try to not finish the bunny hop and just stay leaned back so my back wheel is pretty much already where it needs to be i don't really focus on pushing it down because i feel like it makes it harder to land and balance if you're slamming the back wheel down on the ground so yeah, I would just say hop and save more lean back than you usually would. Fair enough. Next up, we're gonna be hopping off of something and landing in a manual. I think we'll hand this one over to Austin because I think he's a little better at this one than I am. When you're going off of a ledge, most of us like to bunny hop off of it. Well, this one, you're not really gonna wanna do that. You're just gonna wanna ride off instead of hopping. And when you ride off, it is important with this one to push your back end down and try and limit the impact. And then also, uh, you're not really gonna be able to keep the front wheel up by just leaning back. So you're probably gonna have to give the front end a good yank on the initial impact. Then after that, you can sort out getting into your usual balance point. I don't know if this works for you, but I feel like when I hop off of the ledge, I kind of keep my body pretty tall. And then once I land on the ground, I kind of sink down into the manual. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I hope this video helps get you out there trying some new tricks. Just remember, you can always do all sorts of combos with these tricks. You can be creative with it. Do them your own way. Make it unique. But that's going to be it for this one. Please make sure to drop us a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one.